Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 3. Today we're going to have some uh, interesting topics. I got some great questions and I want to answer some things about the collars we use. I want to talk a little bit about uh, general health for Borzois. I also want to talk about this wonderful and magical and uh, amazing fur. So we'll get into all that stuff. Let's start with grooming. Um, probably the biggest issue you'll deal with while having a borzoi is the amount of fur that they are going to shed. They, uh, well actually it's not fur, it's hair, one thing. Uh, just to show you an example, I just brushed Esper. This is just today and I brush her every day. I could make a new dog every week out of the amount of hair that I brush off at Esper. And it's not even shedding season. So when the seasons change, when it gets warm, especially in the summer, um, you're gonna see a massive amount of hair coming off your dog. It's not a problem. Uh, just be ready to vacuum a lot and make sure you have a lint roller for your clothes. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna need it. So that's the biggest challenge, I would say, as sadly as it is. The biggest challenge of having a borzo is dealing with the amount of fur that uh, they shed. Uh, the other thing that's pretty miraculous is they are a very very clean breed. I I don't have to bathe Esper that often. She's very, very clean. They clean themselves. Their fur is like magic. She's been rolling in mud and then in like an hour it just falls off of her. It's almost like they are the non-stick pans of fur. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, that is a really weird position. Are you hiding? <laughs> Esper, Esper, come here. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. They also fold up like origami. Uh, so a couple things about their health. Esper, well, Borzois in general are a very, very healthy breed, uh, which is rare for a purebred and it's rare for a large dog. Uh, there are a few things you have to worry about. There are some heart disease that runs in uh, certain lines, uh, hypothyroidism. If you're getting adopting a dog, be careful because a lot of dogs from overseas might have heartworm, just the regular stuff. Um, if you get your borzoi from a reputable breeder, they will have genetically screened your dog for some of the common traits that are in uh, the breed line. So make sure you can ask for those tests or make sure that they did them uh, so you're getting a puppy that is healthy. They just have some eye diseases and I think it's degenerative myelopathy. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things that the breed have that you, know, you want to be careful for. Other than that, they're extremely healthy. Um, not a lot of hip dysplasia or that sort of things and they live long, healthy lives and very happy lives too. Um, general grooming stuff, uh, you're gonna wanna brush their teeth. Esper absolutely hates her teeth being brushed, but you know, that's, the, that's, a, that's a needed thing. Um, the other thing I wanna make sure you guys realize when you get a Borzoi is they have a very strong prey instinct. This dog was bred to hunt wolves with a group of other Borzois, but they also have since been bred to do coursing, which is like racing, but chasing rabbits, chasing um, a small animal. So their prey instinct, it goes from zero to a hundred instantly. It's like, it's like you turn your dog into a Terminator. It's a different sort of vibe. Esper is very mellow. Her brother is not. If that dog sees a skunk or a squirrel, it is gone. Saying that, you absolutely, 100% of the time when you're walking your dog, need to have them on a leash. You might think for a hot second that they don't need to be on a leash. The second you let it off, they see something, they are gone. And this dog is extremely fast. If I remember correctly, they are the fastest top speed of any dog. I'm going to check that. And if it's wrong, I'm going to put a little thing up on the screen that says, oops, I messed up. Um, so, to that effect... You have to get a special collar. Uh, Sighthounds in general have very slender heads, as you can see. So a regular collar would just bloop right off her face. So the type of collar you use is called a martingale collar, and you have to make sure that they're fitted. It's not a choker by any means. Here you go, sweet pie. But what it does is it has a little loop here, so when you pull taut on a leash, the, the, the collar will get smaller. It's not uncomfortable, it's just used to fit snugly around their neck so it doesn't pop off their ears. You absolutely have to have this. When we had Esper as a puppy, um, and I'll talk about this, we're gonna do a whole video about how we got Esper. She had a regular collar on, and she all she did was whoop, and it came off. So 
you have to make sure you have a martingale collar also one that is properly fitted you don't want absolutely don't want too small and too big they're still going to get out of it so that's a big thing too um is there anything else is there anything else i don't know still keep uh, keep giving those questions i didn't realize how much uh, content i would have and how interested everybody would be uh, about talking about these little fluff pots uh, but if you have any other questions for me, please put them in the comments and I'll try to make a video. Uh, as always, I really appreciate your support. Uh, follow us on Instagram if you want. Follow us on TikTok. We're everywhere. Follow us here if you'd like uh, so I can keep doing these videos. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. I should be ready. You're going to like that, do you? You're so cute. I know I'm setting you down. I know. I know. It's, it's tough. It's tough love. <laughs>